Oh, no, you have to excuse me. I was chewing on some nerds candy corn. Today we're going to talk about under the silver lake. Hmm, that's some good candy corn. Under the Silver Lake is a movie that was not marketed, but it is apparently a hypnotic and inspired neo-noir with five stars by the Time Out New York. New York and Time Out. Apparently New York did something bad. Now they're in Time Out reviewing movies. It stars Andrew Garfield. At Riley Cough. It's an excellent film with the A24 slap of approval on it. With Lionsgate, Pastel, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. We're just going to say every studio ever touched this movie and nobody wanted it. I have no idea why. It is one of the most excellent films I have ever seen. Under the Silver Lake is a film by David Robert Mitchell, and it is one of the smartest films I have ever had the pleasure of viewing. It's very difficult to explain in a roughly 10 to 15 minute video. You would actually have to watch the movie to understand. Granted, I will be spoiling a fair bit of it, so I would imagine that you would either have watched this film when you're viewing this, or you plan to watch this film after viewing this, in which case I need to spoil just enough to get you interested, but not too much to give the whole thing away. So let's start by reading the back. From the dazzling imagination that brought you, it follows. Follows under the silver lake. Starring Andrew Garfield and Riley Cough in a delirious fever dream about one man's search for the truth behind the mysterious crimes, murderers, and disappearances in his East LA neighborhood. There is a dog killer in this man's neighborhood, and he is about to be evicted from his apartment, but he does not seem to care in the slightest. You see, this man is a down on his rocks, rather loserish loser, who has no idea where he's going in life. But the only thing he seems to be interested in, apparently, is this neighbor that he has. You see, he lives in a very nice apartment complex, and he looks out his window, and he sees a lady in the swimming pool. She's skinny dipping, apparently. And she waves him over, and they have a nice conversation. And then they do some nice talking talk. And then they leave. They part. They part ways. The following day, she has been vanished a And now he's looking all over town for her. He's talking to people. He's talking to known acquaintances. He's talking to friends. He's talking to the landlord. Everybody. Nobody seems to know where this girl has gone. So he's searching all over, and all throughout this time, people are speaking and passing about a mysterious dog killer, and all the dogs are being killed all over the place. And this man seems to have a certain sort of ability to hear people speak in dog. Because when people sometimes talk to him, they bark! When people are talking, they're barking to him! So is he the killer of those dogs? Or maybe he's actually the dog whisperer, and he understands that humans actually speak in dog. You never know. I, I don't know. But what I can tell you is that despite all of my fun that I'm having trying to explain terribly this movie, this film is worth the watch in that you are going along with Andrew Garfield trying to discover what happened to this girl. Where did she go? And how come nobody seems to want to give him a straight answer? And then near the end, in the third act, some of the best twists and plot reveals happen. He ends up meeting this very fake old man who's actually a young man who's a good piano player. And this man explains to Andrew Garfield the truth about music, Hollywood, creativity, script writers, screenwriters, all sorts of ghostings going on. He, he tells 
Andrew Garfield that the creativity that he thinks is creative is not actually creative at all. That there are an underground group of creative people being creative for the uncreative people, and the uncreative people are taking credit for the, uh, the creative people's creativity. And this has been happening since the dawn of the grift of, 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 of the sneakies. It has been happening for quite some time, and all of this conspiracies, every conspiracy nut theory that you could ever possibly imagine, from aliens to dog whispers, is in this film. It's very hard to explain without giving it away, so I have to talk about it the way I'm talking about it now. All I can tell you is, if you are even the remotest bit curious about what this movie is, if you have no idea what it is, if it's never, if they, they never marketed this thing. They didn't even release this on Blu-ray. They have only ever released it on DVD. If you want to find this film, I think I can find it for you on streaming. Let me see. Look out, Andrew Garfield. There's a candy corn on your eye. Mm. So I found where you could probably watch this movie. If you have Hulu, you could probably find it there. If you don't have Hulu, then it might be on Paramount Plus. I'm not too sure. You can always grab it digitally off Amazon Prime Video. I don't know if it's on streaming, under the trial free, whatever. Or you could just buy it. Or you could just buy the DVD. This was like three dollars. It's very cheap. Technically, it was a dollar bin movie. So I'm going to be putting it in the dollar bin videos. Either way, there's not too much I could talk about without giving the film away. But if I have confused you enough, then maybe you are in the perfect frame of mind to watch Under the Silver Lake and take away all of that confucius, trippy nonsense that the only David Robert Mitchell can deliver. This is Under the Silver Lake. It's imaginative. <laughs>